What's up YouTube? Today's the day. Got the pilot bearing going on, got the clutch going on, putting the transmission on the engine, and I'm going to shoehorn it right into the car. First thing I need to do is put the chains on the engine and get this thing up in the air. I have not put all the accessories on. I'm trying to debate if I want to put them on before I put it in the car. I thought about just putting it on in the engine or putting it on in the car and then putting these on after because I believe I would have enough, uh, enough space. But I still got to figure that out. So I got it up on the engine hoist. And the first thing I need to do is get this pilot bearing out. I have the, went to O'Reilly's and went and got the puller, uh, the thing attaches on, and then the slide hammer that hammers it out. So let's go ahead and get this set up. Okay, the idea with the pilot bearing puller is you have these little notches on the end and you stick it through the pilot bearing and then you'll screw this rod and it will expand and then you get the, ha the slide hammer and then it'll pull right out. I had to do a little tweaking on this because the pilot bearing was a little bit more narrow. It was a little bit more narrow and the prongs were a little bit out. So just trim just the hair and it slid right in there. So let's uh, get the slide hammer and get this thing out. All right, once you got it screwed in, you just Well, that didn't work. All right, well, because I had picture, not video, I didn't get it out, but I got it. This thing looked like it was about to slide out again. You can't even see the end on them, but that's how you get it out. Let's take a look inside, make sure it's all clean. All right, well, I guess the pilot bearing broke it in pieces that's okay just gotta make sure I get everything cleaned out before I put the new one in I got a national pilot bearing that's the part number and here's the bearing this is the side that sticks out toward the transmission that goes toward the engine don't put it on the other way you know, put it on there. And it goes flush. <clears throat> it goes flush onto here. So I got a 19 inch socket and it is just small enough to fit on there. I mean, it's, meaning it's just a little bit small. So there's a little bit of extra lip. And we're gonna hammer it on as straight as possible. All right, it might be a little bit hard to see, but I have it nice and flush. So the pilot bearing is in. Now I can work on getting the clutch. Just a quick note, one thing to help get the pilot bearing in, I put it in the freezer for about 20 minutes and then it was able to get in a bit easier. All right, for my clutch, I am getting a, well, a slightly used clutch. I decided not to go with the LS1 and I am upgrading to the LS7 clutch. I got this, it had 7,000 miles on the car and the guy changed to an LS9 and it was 250 bucks. I couldn't pass that up. It's, I mean, 7,000 miles, not that, that's just basically broken and for 250 bucks. 
Let me show you the difference between the LS7 and the LS1 uh, flex plate. See, on the left is the LS1 flex wheel, clutch plate, whatever, flex wheel. And on the right, you can see this is the LS7. It's a bit beefier. Um, it has the ridges to be able to hold on. And it's just a nice, clean, simple upgrade uh, from the LS1 clutch. The first thing we're gonna do is just get the flex plate and get it set up on the back and go ahead and screw them, screw the screws down by hand tight and then we'll go through our uh, three pass torquing sequence. What's nice is there's a little lip that this thing can go on to. I need to make sure it's lined up with the bolt holes because it won't be very easy to spin. And you know, I can't just spin it because the crank will want to start to turn. The bolts are 15 millimeters and we're going to go through three passes, a 15, 37, and then a 74. Don't forget to put some blue or red uh, Loctite on the bolts themselves. All right, 15 done. Now to 37. All right, 37 done. Now up to 74. Well, it was a pain, but I got the 74 done. I had two bolts here, had a pry bar holding it, and then um, was able to uh, get them torqued down. All right, now we gotta get our clutch alignment tool. I wanted to get a steel or a metal clutch alignment tool, but couldn't find one, so I just got the cheap plastic one. This is the center force clutch alignment tool and it's just a, a little plastic thing. So be careful because these things can, you know, dent in and then you gotta get a new alignment tool, but it was cheap. So we will throw it in there and try to get it aligned up. All right, when you're going to put on your, your plate, make sure that you're not putting it on backwards. You can see this has a raised side. This side goes toward the slave cylinder so it could push in the clutch. Kind of makes sense. Sometimes you see people put them on backwards, which it kind of it kind of sucks when you go in and step on the clutch and it won't even uh, won't depress the clutch or you can't engage in gears because the clutch is on backwards. So let's get this on. Again, don't forget to put the Loctite of your choice on the bolts. I use blue, should be fine. And we're going to do this clutch cover in two sequences, 24 foot pounds and then 50 foot pounds. First 24, well, I put 25 foot pounds is done. Now I get to do 50. And same thing as the flex plate is, is the uh, clutch cover, is you do a diagonal pattern. You know, that's, that's pretty standard with most things you do is, you don't want to torque one side down so it's tilted. So, you know, you go opposite ends. Now let's get the 50 foot pounds done.
right, guys, that's all I got for today. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.